Hey guys, and welcome to the deck profile for Medoche. So yes, Medoches are being taken off of Daily Duels today. You're getting a lot of videos today. What are you getting, like seven? Yeah, so very, very busy day today. So of course, you're getting this, Daily Duels, which is the deck profile for Medoche. And then also, you're getting, um, you know, lining up with Lunar using the new deck that I'll be replacing Medoche, which is Noble Knights. Hopefully, I can learn how to use that deck correctly and do the plays correctly, cross my fingers. So, of course, before I go into that, the whole new tag partnering system, which you guys may have seen this last couple of days, is pretty much um, the tag decks are focused on the weekends. And by weekends, I mean, um, you know, I record the day ahead. Therefore, those days are the days that I don't have school, that I don't talk about school, college. So this includes Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday, because Monday I record on Sunday. So I'm also mostly free. So those are the tag days. Now, we have six tag partners. So, to keep it fair, because it used to be Omega Chaos and Slate sharing a day, but yet no one else was sharing a day, I decided to be, let each tag partner share a day. But then I decided that that wouldn't be fair because then the videos would be shorter and, you know, it'd be more cramped and you know, they wouldn't like it. So I decided, that's more work on me, but I decided that on those days you get double daily duels. So, you guys may have seen it both Saturday and Sunday where, you know, one tag partner will have the number like 478, while the other pack tag partner has 478.5 so pretty much it's double you get double daily duels so you get both both the videos will have the same deck being used so whether it be heraldics cocky mirror or in this case it'll be noble knights but it'll be different tag partners so it'll be you can either watch the original number or the 0.5 either or you can watch them both and you can go ahead and you don't have to like skip through the video to watch your portion so if you're coming for omega chaos you don't have to skip through slate or watch slate if you don't want to you can just go click on the chaos video if you want to watch slate click on slate's video if you want to see stanzi click on stanzi you want to see holly click on the holly if you want to see tiago click on tiago and if you want to see lunar click on lunar so that way everybody uh, gets what they want everybody's happy I had to do more work, I had to record longer, so, you know, each tag video, um, the cutoff will be at 20 minutes to 30 minutes, and if it goes beyond, then it goes beyond, depending on the duel, but, you know, if I'm sitting here at, like, you know, 25 minutes, no, we're not gonna record another one, but, you know, if we're sitting here at 45 minutes in this duel, is it still isn't over, then, hey, you know, so, you know, I can't, I'll try to keep it as fair as I possibly can when it comes to how the length of the tag videos, but, um, you know, this way everybody is happy. So, and uh, I can still talk about my school days, and for the weekdays, I can create decks that run back row and, um, you know, are more flexible when it comes to, um, you know, dueling. So, of course, you know. And also, it's a little bit easier on me because now I don't have to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning on Thursdays to record uh, Tag New Tiago. I can just simply, on Sunday, where I'm mostly free, just be like, hey, Tiago, it's Sunday, let's record. And he'll be like, all right, you know, for Monday, because Tiago used to be on Monday, you know, and Lunar is on Sunday as well. So, mostly, mostly free, mostly free. So, uh, much easier. So, but uh, just to make it fair, there will be no tagging Tiago this Monday because. He already had Thursday, and you know it's too close. So um, he will be getting, he will be coming back next Monday. And also, I have seven videos going out today. I really don't want to make it eight. So uh, no, so no tagging with Tago, but there will still be Lunar, and Lunar will be with Medoche. So he'll be the first tag partner with Medoche. So I uh, look forward to that as well. So come back and see that. But for now, Dark Power with Medoche. So this one will be a little bit longer because there's actually two Medoche decks. There's one, which of course was the tag deck when Lunar was here, but then sometimes Lunar wasn't here, so I actually made a Mendoche deck that ran back row and played as a, you know, a, a single play deck, so I'll be doing that one as well, so Mendoche deck profiles with an S, so. Uh, of course, starting off, we run Triple Magellan, Magellan's the best, you know, it's your searcher, why wouldn't you run it? Um, I personally run Triple Messing Gelato, um, he clogs, he definitely does at times, but, um, you know, you need Messing Gelato in your deck, Messing Gelato has to be in your deck to get off your plays efficiently, so, you know, if I draw one, that's fine. I still got two more in the deck, you know. I see some players running two, which is fine, but, you know, I just don't want to risk it, you know, drawing the, both the messenger lines and having my place hindered, because he really doesn't do much in the hand, so, you know, unless you're going to go kitty cat summon messenger gelato search you know, for the fill spell or ticket, and he's really not doing much. You definitely want to summon him from the deck, so, uh, you know, I like keeping him up number, so, you know, I, while I'm increasing the odds that I draw him, I'm also increasing the odds that there's more in the deck for him to stay. Um, you know, I run Rota in this deck, but definitely I don't run it for him, so, yeah, because you never want him in your hand, so, no, Messenger Lotto is, like, the worst draw in this deck. Of course, we run Troop with Hoot Cake. Hoot Cake is the playmaker. 
you know, just being able to go uh, kitty cat hoot cake and there you go or you can just go kitty cat and jelly and jelly get hoot cake so hoot cake is the playmaker uh, I remember when we wanted this deck hit and then it kind of just fell off so I'm not saying it's a bad deck you know I still see it top every once in a while it's still a really strong deck it's just plays are linear and can easily be stopped by you know the triple vanity's emptiness running around so yeah maybe if vanity's emptiness got limited maybe this deck could do something again but for right now I'm not seeing it Alright, we're running Triple Kitty Cat. Kitty Cat is definitely uh, the best um, out of all the, the three summoners that are used in this deck. Just because you can recycle it back, so you can go like Kitty Cat and Jelly and Jelly, get Hoot Cake, uh, Oog Egg, Banish and Jelly, Summon, Messenger, and Messenger, Life, Search for your Fill Spell, Activate your Fill Spell, Exceed to Levier, Levier, Detach the Kitty, Summon back the Angelic, Exceed to Tiramisu, Detach the, the Angelic. Target your uh, kitty cat and target your Angeli. Spin back to your opponents, back to the deck, and because of your filled spell, you would add the kitty cat and your Angeli right back to your hand. Therefore, you just did this whole play and still recycled your cards back for next turn. So, you know, even if shit hits a fan and they were decking you, you could still just next turn just go, okay, well, kitty cat and jelly make another turn soon, you know, do the same play. So, uh, definitely kitty cat's the best, but it's good to have others because, you know, I wanted to pump out. Uh, you know, jelly as quickly, as fast, and consistently as possible, so that's why this version of this deck was made. So next, we of course, we run triple and jelly, because a jelly is like the, the card that saved this deck. Remember, this deck used to actually be on daily duels at, uh, at the start. It was one of the starter decks on daily duels, and then it got taken off, same thing with Harpies, and then it came back, and then uh, Harpies got taken off again, but um, Majority stayed for a while, but now, you know, it's time for Majority to go, they're getting kind of boring, so um, they're leaving now. And um, I'm not sure if they'll come back because unless they get some new cards, but you know, do they really need anything stronger than Angeli? I mean, come on, it's a lone fire for the deck. Like, once you get that, you you should be done. You know, look at you, Noble Knight. So we're just trading in our Angeli for some Merlin. So look forward to that. All right. I personally run the Merlin copies. Like I said, I want to get out um, the Tiramisu as fast and consistently as possible. So when I don't have to hit Kitty Cat to go with the Cake, um, Merlin Captain can go ahead and be a fine substitute. Um, also, the Marauding Captain Lamp has saved our butts a couple of times uh, because your opponent can't target another face of Warrior Monster for attack, except for this one. So you summon Marauding Captain, summon Marauding Captain, and then your opponent can't attack either Marauding Captain because they're like, hey, you can't attack him, you have to attack me. But hey, you can't attack him because you have to attack me, and then you like your opponent can't attack. So it's kind of like a nice little uh, wall. So, but uh, Marauding Captain definitely helps, uh, you know, and increase consistency with, with the Rota searches, uh, you know. Just like I said, I want you to summon German Suits quickly, fast, and consistently as possible. That's the point. Um, same thing with Spell Striker, another warrior. You can go ahead and special summon it by banishing. So you can go Rotus, search for Spell Striker, banish the Rotus, and you just search, use search Spell Striker, special summon search, uh, Spell Striker. So uh, definitely still a fine play. And uh, no, I totally don't uh, uh, mind this card being in here. Because, uh, like I said, I, in, in a singular play, I nah, probably wouldn't run him. But here, he's fine. You know. The faster I get out to Tumor and help Lunar, the better. Alright, uh, you really only need one filled spell. You can recycle them, you can search them, so you really only need one filled spell, only one should tell it, and you only need one ticket. You know, if your opponent MSTs them, hey, that's a Medoche card in the graveyard, so, you know, you really don't even have to get set up with the Tiramisu. You can just summon your Tiramisu with, uh, two level four Medoches, like, see, oh, I got Medoche in the graveyard, Medoche ticket, or Medoche should tell, just, boop, put them back, spin. So, um, they're recyclable, you can always get them back, so you really only need one of each. Uh, Triple MST and triple lances, because of course, you know, back row, you know, it's not our friend in here, so, you know, we run the hate. It, it was a tag deck, therefore we run the hate, so, you know, don't get in my way, it's my plays, I'm gonna MST you, I'm gonna block myself with lance, I'm gonna world decree you, and I'm gonna go off with my play and turn to sue you back, and you're just gonna be sad, so, yay. Alright, uh, I run the triple interfusion, and interfusion, I run the one kitty cat, but then I also run the two carabana. Uh, sometimes they use it, the Institution with the Kitty Cat, because, you know, it's just like Zumaran Captain Spell Striker in that case, with the Hoot Cake. But uh, generally, it's just to go into these four plays, just in case, you know. So, you know, if I had a shitty hand, and I, need, I just need to go Magdalene Search, Institution Summon, uh, Carbonala, Warrior, XC Dark 101, Take You. So, uh, it helps. It just helps with the consistency. Institution is a very, very powerful card. And, uh, you know, like I said, if Noden ever comes out here, I wouldn't be surprised if Institution gets hit, because... It, it's always been that kind of card, so, you know, just, you know, pay some light points to get an additional monster on the field, like, just ridiculous, so, definitely, just, so, 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 so strong. Uh, Dark Gold Regeki, you know, I told you, Oman just cleaning the field, you know, 
and we might be behind, so I don't mind these. Uh, like I said, this, this is one of the few decks that can't play Insta Fusion because all my monsters go back to the deck, so... Uh, not Insta Fusion, uh, Soul Charge, so... One of the few decks that can't play Soul Charge like that, I really didn't want to risk it, so I just kind of left it alone, so no Soul Charge in here. And then Triple Roto because we have um, Ryan Captain and Spell Tracker who are very key plays in this deck, allowing you to get out your Tiramisu as fast and consistently as possible, so... Uh, Rota is definitely a fine card to play in here. If you're not running Moran Captain or Special Striker, do not run Rota because you do not want to search for Messenger Files. Never in your hand. Bad. And then Rota Decree because fuck background. Alright, so. Extra deck wise, we run fourth. Two Tiramisu. Um, I, I debate putting it up to three, but I guess you can always just cycle here. You can always shuffle back and put the Tiramisu back with the Tiramisu, so. Um, you know, it's not too terrible. You know? So, Tiramisu. Uh, and two Invoker, I actually cut him down to one, but then I put him back up to two because, you know, sometimes you, you know, with how often you get Angeli, you know, you don't go to Moran Captain route, you go the Leviat route if you get the Angeli, but sometimes you don't, so Invoker is the route to go if you don't have the Angeli play, because you won't have anything banished. I mean, you won't have a military monster banished like Angeli, because who cake didn't banish the Angeli, because Angeli wasn't used, you know, you went Marauding Captain, summon Hoot Cake, Okay, banish, you know, whatever in the graveyard, whether it be, you know, like a dead spell striker, or one of your partner's monsters, one of Lunar's monsters, then summon my, uh, run, I mean, my Messenger Lotto, Messenger Lotto search, XC, not into Levier, because, you know, there is no banishment LJ, so you XC into Invoker, detach, summon a, another Messenger Lotto, see, and that's why you need to keep the Messenger Lottos in your deck, because, you know, you never want to draw them, you're summoning from the deck, clearly, with, uh, especially with Wukake and, and, uh, and Invoker. And, you know, XC right into uh, Tiramisu, detach the Messing Gelato, of course, you just detached, uh, you, hopefully you detached the Hoot Cake, and not the Marauding Captain, so the Hoot Cake would be in the graveyard off of Invoker, so you target the Hoot Cake, you target the Messing Gelato, and you put them back, and you spin, so, uh, you know, I kind of feel like 2-2 two -two is the right number for this deck. Uh, one Zen Main is just in case we get a crappy hand, so I can just go make a Zen Main sit on it. 1101, one, one, one Castell. I'm liking this this combination because lately I was just running the Castell and then I was like, man, I wish I had a 101. You know, but then there's times where I just, I have, all I have is 101 and I'm like, I wish I had a Castell. So I like the 1-1 one, one combination. Uh, Cowboy, he wins games. Love him. I would probably never take him out because he literally does win games, especially if you're running a deck that makes four. So definitely good. And uh, Dweller, Dweller, he also locks it down at times. You know, there was a time when we didn't run him and I wish I ran him. I think it was a like assault mode. So I decided to put Dweller in there and he's just been chilling in there ever since. Exiton, it's generally this deck is generally up on resources, but I like the I like the safety coverage. You know, there might be times where I'm just straight up down on resources, so I like Exiton to be there. You know, it's a toolbox. It's a toolbox. You may not always use all the tools in your toolbox, but it's nice to have your tools in the toolbox for when you need them. That's that's all I got to say about that. And then our fusions, the one fusionist, and then our two uh, Carbonala warriors. So. Yeah. Alright, so like I said, this is going to be a two-parter, so I'm going to go ahead and do the deck profile of the Moshe decks that I used when uh, Lunar wasn't around or was busy, and uh, I did single duels. So, uh, uh, be right back. Alright, we're back. So, as you can clearly see, this is called Madoche's Back Row, because Back Row, because I run Back Row in here, and it's a pretty dirty deck. I'm trying to run it just like how Madoche's would be kind of ran if I was trying to run the deck, it's, you know, mostly competitively. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the deck profile, so... Of course, I am running Triple Magdalene, Triple Messenger, like I said, I don't want to draw him, so, and I want to keep them all in the deck, so I kind of feel safe doing that play and keeping them there, so, uh, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, Triple Hoot Cake, and then Triple Key Cat, Triple Angeli, so, yep, you know, you got the girl, the guy, the, the, the owl, the cat, and then the doll, so, it's pretty much the, the combination, you know, it used to be just this form, and then as soon as Angeli, you know, helped the deck immensely. Um, I personally like the idea of the fire and ice hand in this deck, you know, just being able to clear out your opponent's field while also putting monsters in the graveyard for who cake, you know, who cake food, it's that's definitely good, you know, this deck is probably one of the most aggressive plays and probably really linear when it comes to just making that turn with suit, so, uh, you know, the fire and ice hand help with your aggressiveness, your defensiveness, and your setup, so I personally like it, you know, as soon as I saw the fire and ice hands in, in my dungeon, I was like, that's a pretty smart idea, so, I decided to go with it, and it's been working for me when I ride do uh, single goals. Um, like I said, you only need one of each, one ticket, one uh, chateau, so I don't remember one. Uh, triple MST, because I like to space my opponent's background, clear it up, and make sure that my Chamisu plays are open, so yay. Uh, one Regeki, uh, you know, Regeki is fine. I didn't run, I opted not to run the Dark Hole, because I was like, oh, the Dark Hole, I could run, you know, other backgrounds, so I was just like, you know, 
Um, you know, like I can clear my opponent's monsters, that's, that's fine, but I don't want to dark hold my own field, so. You know, well, it may get you set up in your graveyard with your Majority's if you happen to uh, dark hold your own Majority monster, and you go to the graveyard and not show back to the deck because it's only when your opponent does something. Um, I just kind of opt out because, you know, I really don't mind it. You know, I could, that's that's another piece of background that I could be writing, and you can clearly see I'm running background here. So, I run the warning, of course, to convulse, you know, these two are staple. Bottomless isn't that good, Trentil's not that good, so I opted not to run them. I'd probably go with Bottomless over Trentil, because I was starting to hate Trentil much more than I was starting to hate Bottomless, so, yeah. But these two are still good, still really good, you know, even against anybody, they're still good. <laughs> now, you're like, oh, why do you want a Solemn Warning of Dante? It'll get the fact, just Solemn Warning the Tour Guide, like, it's not that hard, you know? You know, I'll throw a, a Solemn Warning at your Shadal Fusion, like, no, you shut the hell up with that. <laughs> You didn't. You never summoned the fusion monster, so you know. Therefore, your fusion monster would never be sent to the graveyard. Therefore, you're not going to get that uh, that thing back. So that's good, unless you play like what roots or something. But who plays that? So yeah. Anyway, so these two are really good. Um, I was playing the Phoenix Chain, uh, not only for the effect negation, but also to lock it down, make sure my opponent didn't attack me because you know sometimes it took a while for this deck to get set up. You know the hands weren't the best with this deck, so you know being able to Phoenix Chain my opponent's monster, make sure that they don't activate their effect nor attack me is fine. You know, if they want to use an MST on it, hey, more power to them. So, yeah. Uh, I have to run two traps done. I was running three, but then it was cloggy, so I put down two, so I'm doing the whole trap stun, uh, Vanity's Emptiness route, so, you know, I trap, I flip with Vanity's Emptiness, stop my opponent from flash something, then my turn, trap stun, Vanity's Emptiness will try to go away, but it's stunned by trap stun, so it stays. Therefore, it's trap stun, so it's negated for the turn. I special summon all I want. Also, you know, I special summon all I want. And, you know, trap cards are negated, so I go ahead and make my tiramisu whatever. Spin back will do whatever in my turn. And then I end my turn, then uh, the trap stun wears off, then it just goes back into effect, and my opponent can't special summon, and they have to deal with like a 27 tiramisu without special summoning, which might be very difficult depending on what they have in the hand. So, you know, I like, kind of personally like that play, so I went ahead and went for it. Uh, triple D Prison, D Prison is just freaking good, like, D Prison is probably the best, you know. I will take D Prison over Breakthrough Skill, I'll take it over, uh, you know, Phoenix Chain, it's just so good, you know. I think the only card I would probably take over D Prison is probably Chalice, because I'm more of an aggressive duel, so, you know, you know, you know, I play, like, Bujins, I play Constellars, I play, you know, Evil Swarm, so, when I attack into that shit all a monster, and, I, and they flip up, and I get to go ahead and see what it is, it's like, oh, I, Ophion, attack, your face down monster, you flip it up, it's like, oh, it's a hedgehog, alright, you can go ahead and search for fusion, it's not like you can play it anyway, I have Ophion, but it's like, I attack, and it flips up, and it's like a dragon, or like a squamata, then of course, throw this freaking chalice at it, because then it's effect will be, flip the effect will be negated, because chalice can activate during the damage step, so, that's probably the only card that I would take over Deep Prison, but really, in my heart, it's like, Chalice, no, of course, Vanities, Chalice, D Prison, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah. So, I, and my preferred preference of negation between Chalice, Fiendish, and Breakthrough Skill, I choose Chalice because it can actuate during the damage step. So, that's why I like also that 400 uh, traditional attack uh, during the damage step is not too terrible, too, depending on what I'm going to get. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, but still, D Prison is good, like I said. Sometimes it takes me a little while to get set up, so being able to D Prison my opponent's monsters, get them out of the way. Uh, it's fine. And then, of course, Triple Vanities, because, like I said, this is the back row version, this is the dirty version, this is the version that I was trying to make the deck semi-competitive, so, you know, being able to just throw out the Vanities and lock my opponent down for special summoning. I said this card should be limited, but they wanted to reprint it, so, they have Secret Rare. You know, I, I, I already got my three commons, and I'm not planning on Rarity upping or Rarity bumping. I'm fine. You know, especially for a card that's probably going to get hit in this upcoming list, so, why well, opt to, you know, get the Rarity bump? And I picked my Vanities up when they were, like, $5, so... No, I'm not gonna be too salty about the deck, the card getting hit. I mean, I personally think it's unhealthy for the game, you know. So I wouldn't mind this card being hit to one or even banned. If they want to ban it, then hey, more power to you. But you know, one is fine. You know, everybody gets one. It's like Spider-Man. You know, it's that staple sacky card that everybody would run. You know, you know, if you think that Soul Charge is fine at one, then I say then be just fine as one at one as well. You know, but like two halves of the same coin. So yeah. One allows you to special summon a whole bunch, one allows you not special summon at all. But they're still, this is still both unhealthy for the game, so yeah. Alright, in this deck I ran three Tiramisu, I don't know why, you know, I just kind of did. I had a lot of room in here, so why not? So, yeah, triple Tiramisu, I guess. I don't know, 2-2, two, two, I already went over that. Then main yeah, Cowboy, yeah, Castell, yeah, 101, yeah. Black Ship, I don't know why you're here. You know, uh, anything that Black Ship can do, like Castell could do better, so Black Ship's kind of been found obsolete. 
you know, besides that thousand burn damage, you know, so it's like, oh, send it to the graveyard, or I can spin it back and attack, so, you know, Castell just does everything that, um, Black Ship, uh, uh, Diamond Dyer, My Stroke, to an extent 101, but I still feel comfortable having 101 there as well, because, you know, Castell can't protect itself, sometimes I just want to go, make a 101, take your monster, and then, you know, just like the My Stroke effect, where if I'm destroyed, detached, you know, well, Castell, you know, you kill me, I'm dead, so, you know, I like having a little extra bit of protection, so, 101, I say, you're not out of job, Castell, but, you know, anything that you can do, mostly when it comes to taking that monster, Castell can just spin it back, you know, so, it depends on where you want to put the monster, you want to equip it as a C material, and then they hit you, detach it, and they can just solo charge the monster back, or you can just spin it back to an extra deck, you know, but then they'll get it to use it later, so it really depends, so I like having both of these, but, Black Chef, like, like I said, Castell is much better than you, so, yeah. Uh, the level chain, get me set up, you know, detach, put the Angelia on top of the deck. So I've done it plenty of times, you know, we'll put the Kitty Cat with the Angelia or whatever. So, yeah, Dweller and then Exiton. Alright, so, uh, yeah, this is the Madoche deck profiles, plural, you got two. So, like I said, Madoches are off, and uh, Noble Knights will be on, so be sure to watch the second episode of Daily Duels today. It will be lining up with Lunar, and I will be using Noble Knights, so... Um, cross your fingers, hoping I'm doing it right. Right now, I'm using a deck that Stompy gave me. I've never played Noble Knights before, but I generally know the general combo. So, but, uh, you know, I haven't really put my, you know, my personal flair, flair or, you know, choices on the deck, so, you know, I'm kind of worried. Um, I, I haven't really playtested it at all, so my first time experience will be interesting to watch. So, uh, look forward to it. So, um, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. Thank you for supporting this deck on Daily Duels. It's been here for a cool minute. It's been on here. It got taken off. It's been on here again because it got jelly. Then got taken off again. But it was a fun experience. So, I hope that you guys enjoyed this uh, deck profile. And I hope that you guys enjoyed Madoche being on Daily Duels. So, um, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. And I will see you guys um, in the second Daily Duels activity today. Thanks for watching.